Thanks very much, Diana. There's several hundred people gathered outside of Government Palace, the seat of the Portuguese-led administration, ready for the lowering of the Portuguese flag for the last time. Quite an emotional time here for many uh, as they saw the flag going down. For others, it was just a sense of being present at something important. Yes. And where will uh, the governor go from here? From here, the governor will prepare for the final handover ceremonies along with the president of the Republic of Portugal. He is expected to leave right after the handover ceremonies back to Lisbon. What he plans to do afterwards is unclear. He was asked by some reporters whether he'd write a book. He said no and seems to have been keeping a low key, his motives low key. Even critics concede that uh, what he has succeeded in doing through his pursuit of uh, reform and open door policies is to do the unthinkable, or what would have been unthinkable 25 years ago, and that is a, a cementing of a relationship between the communist leadership and Hong Kong's business community. Now that relationship is very strong right now, and that is uh, a legacy of Deng Xiaoping and his uh, pursuit of economic reform. Government House is often the scene of protests and petitions, but today a crowd of several thousand have gathered demanding nothing more than a final glimpse of Governor Patton as he leaves for the last time. I'm in Victoria Park where history is being made. For the first time ever, activities honoring those killed in the Tiananmen Square crackdown are being held on Chinese soil. Welcome to Hong Kong and Macau Review 99. I'm Ray Rudowski. It was a year of legal triumph and heartbreak for many mainland children hoping to be reunited with their parents. On the economic front, the recession ended, but unemployment remained at record highs. A deal was made for Mickey Mouse to set up shop in Hong Kong, and Macau said farewell to foreign rule. And to top it off, Mother Nature dealt a heavy blow to the SAR by making it one of the stormiest years on record. And that's where we begin. right and that sheared the uh, wing off. That's, that's harrowing. You could actually hear the explosion like boom like that. And you could have been second. The whole thing flip over. Everybody screaming, yelling. It was supposed to be a routine landing. Then tragedy struck. Flight CI-642 crashed as the pilot tried landing in the middle of Typhoon Sam. Three people died and 214 others were injured. This is in fact one of the most serious aircraft accidents in Hong Kong's history. It was China Airlines' second crash in 18 months. A preliminary report cited excess fuel and the breakaway of landing gear as factors, but the final report and exact causes may not be released for another year. The airport remains open, whether it is Taiwan signal number eight or signal number three. It is in accordance with international practice. The decision whether to land or not to land rests with the airline and the captain. Xi'an, China's ancient capital, where East once met West and where President Bill Clinton begins his historic visit. But in the shadow of China's past is the face of China's future. Hundreds of jobless workers laid off from state-run industries hope for odd jobs. One estimate puts China's unemployment at nearly 10 percent. When a government-owned construction company folded, Chang Chunfeng lost his job and has now lost hope. <laughs> But China remains determined to reform its crumbling state sector, while around it, Asia struggles with economic turmoil. It's in this atmosphere U.S. President Bill Clinton begins his visit here. And with 16 billion U.S. dollars invested in this country, the U.S. is as anxious as China to ensure reforms succeed. But trade relations remain tense. China sells more than it buys, leaving the U.S. with a 50 billion U.S. dollar trade deficit. China enjoy the typhoon. It's so much anxiety to keep that deficit there so China can earn more and more foreign currency. 
The U.S. continues to block China's entry into the World Trade Organization, saying it maintains too many barriers. But analysts predict a breakthrough. In the run-up to the summit, uh, the Chinese have given some indications that they are amenable to uh, further opening up certain sectors of the Chinese market. And in Xi'an, at the gate where President Clinton will speak, some workers spruce up the past, while outside, others face an uncertain future. Ray Rudowski, TVB News, Xi'an.